in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our opening prayer. We worship you, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are the living God of our nation's founding fathers, George Washington, John Adams, John Hancock, Benjamin Franklin, Samuel Adams, Patrick Henry, and many others. When we pledge our allegiance, it's as one nation under you. Every time we use American money to buy or sell, we make the statement that in you we have placed our trust. Again and again, you have given us victory over our enemies. You have blessed us when we have gone out and when we have come in. You have blessed us in our bustling cities and in our beautiful countryside. You have blessed our fruited plains so that we have an abundance for ourselves and for others. You have opened up the storehouse of your bounty and have blessed the work of our hands. You have given us unprecedented prosperity so that in the past we have lent to many nations but been debtor to none. We now turn to you as the God of our fathers. You alone are our hope for the future. If we as a nation do not get right with you, no one in Washington or in our state capitals can reverse the downward moral and spiritual spiral that has become a free fall and is provoking your judgment. With fear and trembling, we confess our national sins. Therefore, we turn to you, Jesus Christ, with tears of shame and repentant hearts. Please, God of our fathers, for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, do not back away from us. Do not remove your hand of blessing on us. As we return to you with humility, with sincerity, out of necessity, with a desperate sense of urgency, please return to us. Hear our prayer, forgive our sin, heal our land for the glory of your great name, Jesus. Amen. We want to uh, welcome uh, you to the National Day of Prayer. Because of the faith of many of our founding fathers, public prayer and national days of prayer have a long-standing and significant history in American tradition. The Supreme Court of the United States affirmed the right of state legislatures to open their sessions with prayer in Marsh versus Chambers in 1983. The National Day of Prayer is a vital part of our heritage since the first call to prayer in 1775. When the Continental Congress asked the colonies to pray for wisdom in forming a nation, the call to prayer has continued through our history, including President Lincoln's proclamation of a day of humiliation, fasting, and prayer in 1863. In 1952, a joint resolution by Congress signed by President Truman declared an annual National Day of Prayer. In 1988, the law was amended and signed by President Reagan, permanently setting the day as the first Thursday of every May. Each year, the President signs a proclamation encouraging all Americans to pray on this day. Last year, all 50 state governors plus the governors of several United States territories signed similar proclamations. The National Day of Prayer has great significance for us as a nation, as it enables us to recall and to teach the way in which our Founding Fathers sought the wisdom of God when faced with critical decisions. It stands as a call for us to humbly come before God, seeking His guidance for our leaders and His grace upon us as God's people. The unanimous passage of the bill establishing the National Day of Prayer as an annual event signifies that prayer is an important, as important to our nation today as it was in the beginning. Like Thanksgiving or Christmas, this day has become a national observance placed on many calendars and observed annually across the nation and in Washington, D.C. Every year, local, state, and federal observances were held from sunrise in Maine to sunset in Hawaii, uniting Americans from all socioeconomic, political, and ethnic backgrounds in prayer for our nation. It is estimated that over 2 million people attended more than 30,000 observances organized by approximately 40,000 volunteers. At state capitals, county courthouses, on the steps of City Hall, and in schools, businesses, churches, and homes, people stopped their activities and gathered for prayer. The National Day of Prayer belongs to all Americans. It is a day that transcends differences, bringing together citizens from all nations. At this time, I'd like to welcome our honored guests. Today with us is the Hawthorne Woods Police Department. Let us thank God for them, ladies and gentlemen. We're also honored with the Lake Zurich Fire Department. And I'd also like to recognize and honor the member and veterans of our armed forces, active duty and veterans of past uh, duty. Please.
As you notice, we've, we've gathered around the flagpole, and the reason for that, uh, it, the flag is at half mast today. Governor Rauner has asked us to uh, put all flags at half mast in honor, uh, to honor the sacrifice of Sergeant Joshua P. Rogers of the United States Army, who was killed in action this past week or so. His hometown is Bloomington, Illinois, and so the flag will be at half staff all day today. Let us make our pledges both to our uh, American flag as well as our Christian flag, which is flying around our school. First, the, the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag. Everyone can join in together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And to the Christian flag, I pledge allegiance to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the faith for which it stands, one Savior eternal, with mercy and grace for all. The reason I'm holding my phone, by the way, is we are broadcasting live on Facebook, just so you're aware. Yay! Yay. All right, we're going to hear some scripture readings. Uh, two of our teachers are here today. All of our teachers are actually here today, but two of them are going to be reading from the prophet Joel. Joel 2, 1 through 19. Yet even now, declares the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain of offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, Consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. Thank you. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 8. It's members of the third. It's actually, I think, all the third and fourth and fifth and sixth grade excellent romans 8 31 through 39 what then shall we say to these things if god is for us who can be against us he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for all us how we will he not also with him graciously give us all things who shall bring any charge against God you act? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers. Nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. All right, uh, the third reading, they're gonna have prayers in a little bit, but the third reading is from uh, the Gospel of John. That's our first and second graders. So Jesus said to them again, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. 
But the sheep did not listen to them. Find the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch, snatch them out of the Father's hand. I am the Father, our one. Thank you, first and second grade. Okay, we're going to continue with our prayers. We've got several different prayers uh, uh, together. Uh, the, I think Caleb and Morgan, you wrote your own. Right up here into the microphone then. Caleb, the first prayer for the nation. Dear Lord, thank you for all the blessings you give us every day. Thank you for our country. Please help those who are sick in the army, in the police, our firefighters, or our medical personnel. Please help those who are suffering. Please also help our leaders. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Caleb. And I have a specific prayer for the military. Lord God of hosts, stretch forth your almighty arm to strengthen and protect those who serve in the armed forces of our country. Support them in times of war and in times of peace. Keep them from all evil. Give them courage and loyalty. Grant that in all things they may serve with integrity and with honor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Morgan. Dear God, please watch over all those men and women who put their lives in harm's way. Please take care of them just, as they, just like they have done for us. Please bless their hearts. In God's name we pray. Amen. And then for our, commu uh, our community, eternal Lord, ruler of all, graciously regard those who have been set in positions of authority among us in our community, that guided by your spirit, they may be high in purpose, wise in counsel, firm in good resolution, and unwavering in duty, that we may live quietly and peaceably through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now together, let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, God of all concord, it is your gracious will that your children on earth live together in harmony and peace. Defeat the plans of all those who would stir up violence and strife. Destroy the weapons of those who delight in war and bloodshed. And according to your will, end all conflicts in the world. Teach us to examine our hearts that we may recognize our own inclination toward envy, malice, hatred, and enmity. Help us by your word and spirit to search our hearts and to root out the evil that would lead to strife and discord, so that in our lives we may be at peace with all people. Fill us with zeal for the work of your church and the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which can alone bring that peace which is beyond all understanding through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's take a moment of silent prayer once again as we conclude. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.